My name's Callum from Top 10 VPN, and today we're going to look at how simple and how quick and easy it is to install a VPN extension in Google Chrome. So to get things started, all you need to do is open up your Chrome browser, and then if you know the website, great, but if not, I'm just going to Google Chrome Store, and it, there it is, chromewebstore.google.com. You're then going to go to that, and you're going to search for the name of the VPN that you have. In this instance, for this example, I'm going to be using ExpressVPN because it's our highest rated VPN on the website. It's got a great Chrome extension. It's also the one that I use at home in my personal life. So when you do a search for it, just searching for the name right there, the first thing you want to check and, and make sure of is that you're not looking at uh, a fake listing or a duplicate listing, like someone trying to scam you or trick you. As we can see, as we scroll up and down here, there aren't any examples of that with ExpressVPN, but you see it all the time with other VPNs. There will quite often be two of them with the exact same name. One will be the real one, one will be the fake one, and that one will be there just to exist to steal your data. So make sure that you are finding the one that's official. It'll be the one probably with the most reviews there. You can see that one's got a 4.5 star rating as well, but most importantly, you can see it's got the little sort of blue check mark inside the certified symbol with expressvpn.com next to it, showing you that that is the real ExpressVPN. So then to install it, all we have to do is click through to that link and then click add to Chrome. Now, moving up to the extensions bar on the top right there, ignoring all the other ones I've got, that's quite a lot. Yours might look like that as well, to be fair. And then what you want to do is right click on ExpressVPN and select pin to the bar. So that way it'll always be there whenever you boot up your Chrome browser and you won't have to dive into that menu to try and find it if it's not in use. Now to test that it actually works, we go to top10vpn.com and we're going to use our IP checker tool. So when we first boot it up, I haven't got a VPN connected and it's showing me my true IP address and my real location, which when you see it, it's going to be blurred out. I don't want to dox myself, but just take my word for it. That is my real IP address and my real details without a VPN. Then all we do is open up the ExpressVPN browser extension. And we're just going to select the server it's chosen for us there. Obviously, when you come to do this, you can choose any one that you like. It'll have the same effect, but we're just going to choose the default American server. And then refresh the IP checker. And straight away there, you can see the IP address has changed. Our location is now listed as New York, New York, in the United States. And you can see on the map that it's changed for good. So you know the ExpressVPN extension is working. And hopefully yours will as well, no matter what VPN it is that you're using in the browser extension. But if you ever do that and the IP address hasn't changed, something's gone wrong and it's not working. Now ExpressVPN works a little differently to some other browser extensions in that as it even says during the setup there, it's kind of like a remote control for the desktop app. It doesn't operate solely within the browser, so all of your traffic from your device will be protected when you activate it. That's because it also turns on the main desktop app. So do be aware that if you're using a different VPN, you almost certainly won't get that functionality from the Chrome extension, but ExpressVPN is different there. It's always worth taking a look at the other options and settings that are in the VPN extension as well. In the instance of ExpressVPN, there aren't any any other options that you want to enable. You'll do it through the main desktop app. But with a lot of other VPNs, you should explore the settings menu there and see if there's anything like uh, WebRTC leak protection, maybe add and tracker blocking, uh, obfuscation, stuff like that. But you don't need to use that if you don't want to. Maybe read up on what it is that you want to do and whether or not your VPN extension can do it. Uh, otherwise, you should be able to just set and forget. Just click connect and get on with your browsing. It's really super straightforward. That's that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video cleared up any doubts that you might have had. If you were afraid of it at all, there's absolutely nothing to be worried about. Try it yourself with your own VPN and then leave me a comment. Let me know how you get on and I'll see you in the next video.